Let's get some insight from Sung Yoon Lee. He's a professor in Korean studies at Tufts University in Massachusetts. So uh, let's begin with this, this development that caught a lot of people by surprise in Washington. What does this mean? Is this really a breakthrough? Well, how to explain this sudden outreach by Kim Jong-un? It's very unlikely that he woke up on New Year's Day and had a moment of revelation, a moment of epiphany, and decided to be a nice guy going forward. Far more likely is the fact that he's been planning for this all along. After 2017, a year-long bluster barrage, a banner ballistic year, it's time now to switch gears to soften up South Korea by sending athletes, cheerleaders and officials to South Korea's hosting of the Winter Olympic Games and now turn their sights on Washington. We have seen this play out before. almost in identical sequence of steps. In 2000, for example, Kim Jong-un's dad, Kim Jong-il, held the first ever inter-Korean summit with the South Korean president at the time, Kim Dae-jung. Later, we found out that the Southern Kim had paid the Northern Kim under the table secretly, illegally, $500 million, half a billion dollars in the days leading up to his visit to Pyongyang which won him the Nobel Peace Prize later on in the year. And after that, Kim Jong-il turned to Washington, sent a special envoy to meet with President Bill Clinton in October, and came, uh, the, the envoy came with a message of invitation for President Clinton. Clinton sent his Secretary of State, Madeleine Albright, just three weeks later to Pyongyang, and there she was hosting, uh, toasting, pardon me, Kim Jong-il. And Clinton had a real plan, desire to visit Pyongyang, but it didn't work out because of the presidential election, the Al Gore, George W. Bush vote recount problem, and time simply ran out. So it makes sense for Kim to do this, to try to trap the U.S. leader into a face-to-face -face meeting where so you'll have banquets and so postings and bonhomie. So what is the motivation this time around? Well, to get the U.S. and South Korea to relax prematurely sanctions, which have been building up, biting even, over the past year, and that is unprecedented. At no point since the founding of the DPRK has the United States enforced sanctions against North Korea in any meaningful way until about a year ago. So Kim has the intention of seeking to dilute the sanctions, win a free pass for the next provocation, because people will say, even if North Korea conducts another missile test, hey, calm down, the United States, we have a good thing going. We've built this momentum of talks and peace, so let's keep it going. It will work in Kim's favor. And also, Kim wants to, of course, buy time and money with which to further advance his nuclear and missile capabilities. So, so everything's going rather swimmingly for Kim. So do you think this meeting will actually happen then. I mean, a lot can happen between now and May. A lot of diplomacy has to take place. Uh, finding a date and a place, there are a lot of preconditions that need to be made. So what can actually be done with the Secretary of State out of the loop? No U.S. ambassador to South Korea at the moment. Will this actually happen? The meeting could happen only if the Trump administration makes more and more concessions in the coming weeks. Back in 2012, on Leap Day, February 29th, there was an agreement reached between the two sides. North Korea agreed to place a moratorium to suspend uh, nuclear and ballistic missile tests. In return, the U.S. agreed to give North Korea 240,000 tons of food aid. Just 16 days later, on March 16th, North Korea announced to the world it would launch a satellite into space, which requires ballistic missile technology. North Korea was testing the United States to see how far it would go in giving concessions. So it is entirely possible that uh, this planned meeting would never happen. At the same time, if it were to happen, the U.S. would need to make some meaningful concessions like no more sanctions, no more new measures, relaxing existing sanctions, and so on. All right. Sung Yoon Lee in uh, Massachusetts, thank you so much for your insight.